Hello winners, it's Crystal. I just wanted to update on my last video, which was all over the place, and I apologize for that. Um, I wanted to update also um, with my pre-diet now, and then the route that I'm taking, which is the gastric bypass. This will more than likely be a two-part video because I have quite a bit to talk about. I also want to talk about my um, my uh, endoscopy procedure that I had um, and just kind of tell, I wanted to explain the experience. Um, it was a lot better than when I had one a year ago. Um, first off, I wanted to start with, let me look at my little note here. Um, I wanted to start off by letting you all know, um, as the notes read in my last video where I am now doing gastric bypass, my doctor thought that would be better um, and more healthy. Um, way for me because of my health condition, which um, I noted in my last video as well. I um, went to my appointment with my surgeon. It was great. He's awesome. I don't know if I should say his name, but I'm going to anyway because he's wonderful. Um, his name is Dr. Ian Villanueva. Um, he has been doing... Um, He's a bariatric surgeon, so he's not just some general surgeon that just decides, oh hey, one day I just, you know, I just want to cut on somebody's intestine. So he, um, he's amazing. Uh, he came from Florida, um, and he heads a program here in my in my city. Um, I was initially going to go through one of the, well, I'm not going to name the the place that I was going to go through, but. Um, my experience with them, they were like really trying to push me into it, and it was just a real quick thing. And you know, I would I would rather take the precautions and wait, you know, and have to do a pre diet and those types of things. My insurance um, does require a 12 week pre diet, which I've already started. Um, I'm actually a month into that, and I've lost 22 pounds. Yay me! Um, I also, um, my surgeon's office requires an eight-week pre-program, which is their, um, it's a liquid protein diet that you do um, that's tailored specifically for that program. Um, the shakes are actually pretty good. I don't like eating the food because you can bake with the powders, um, with the shake powder and I don't like eating the food it just all has a distinct taste but drinking the shakes is actually fine for me because they're delicious so um, my favorite flavors are cappuccino and they have chocolate and then they have like a variety box they have uh, like orange cream banana cream and, and those types so it's not you know just one flavor or two flavors that you can choose from there's a lot actually um, <clears throat> it's been actually pretty difficult um, the first few weeks were fine, and now I've kind of, um, just because I needed something in my stomach, I started, like, you know, having a salad every other day, um, and I actually found this really good salad dressing, so if you're on a pre-diet, and you're not able to eat food, but then your doctor says, you know, yes, you can have a salad every now and again, um, in the grocery store, and I'm sure most grocery stores have it, but I went to... Um, you can get it at Walmart, um, which, of course, there's a Walmart on every street corner. So, you can get it at Walmart. It's called Japanese Ginger, and it's like an Asian dressing. If you ever go to a Japanese steakhouse where they cook on the grill right in front of you, it's just like that dressing where th when they bring you that salad first. Um, except it's this one's more of a vinaigrette, but it still has the same taste, um, and it's wonderful. Um, so you can find that. It's just Jap Japanese ginger, um, and you can find that in your local grocery store. It's with um, the Oriental food section, so you can find it there. Um, you can also probably find it with the salad dressings, and then where they keep, like, um, different, um, <coughs> different um, ethnicities of um, ingredients and things like that. So... You can find that there. Um, the past few days have been kind of hard because um, I did start eating salad and then I've actually kind of started nibbling a little bit on things that I shouldn't be nibbling on. And um, so I'm not really looking forward to the weigh-in, which I weigh in every Monday. Um, I'm not really looking forward to the weigh-in this week because I think I've probably gained, when I weighed on my scale, I gained back about two pounds. So 
then it's only officially 20 pounds. But um, my surgeon only required me to lose 30 pounds before mm. surgery. So, um, and it's not because my BMI is too high, because my BMI is not too high to qualify for the surgery. But um, he wanted me to lose that 30 pounds because um, I do have a pretty fatty liver. So um, he wanted me to lose the 30 pounds before, just kind of to make recovery a little bit better. <coughs> I will go ahead and, um, well, I'll wait to tell you what I weigh when I get out of this range, <laughs> um, which I'll, I'll let you guys know that later, um, because I'm not sure if there's people that I know that I may not want to know my weight right now, um, so I'm going to wait on that. So, um, I had an endoscopy, um, because I had an endoscopy about a year ago, and it was painful, it was horrible. The medicine they gave me, um, I don't know if it just didn't work on me, you know. They gave me medicine, I think, for probably a 90-pound person, which obviously I'm not 90 pounds. And I choked through the whole thing. Um, I, it was actually hard for me to recover from that. I felt like I had shut for throat for like a month. Um, those of you that aren't familiar with an endoscopy, um, it's where they take a lighted tube. It's about the size of a water hose, um, and it's a hard, hard black plastic tube that um, they put you out with anesthesia and they put it down your throat and they feed it into your stomach and then the upper small part of your intestine called your duodenum. Um, and they check for hiatal hernias. Um, they can biopsy things if you have something in there, which I've had really bad indigestion because of being overweight and, and from sugar. <coughs> and And now I'm actually able to um, live my life without them. So I'm pretty excited about that because I was always in a lot of pain. And so um, my uh, bypass surgeon wanted to do an endoscopy just so he could pretty much see what he was working on, you know, um, to see if there was any extra cutting and chopping and dicing that he needed to do while he was in there. Um, so he did my endoscopy and um, I did have a little bit of a small hiatal hernia which they caught in, in the one about a year ago um, and then also he did a biopsy and he was afraid that I had um, HP pylori bacteria but I don't my results came back clear so I'm pretty happy about that too um, <clears throat> this experience was just all over it was it was better than the first time and it was crazier because I think I knew what to expect this time so I was okay with it and I think I was more relaxed um but I had the worst bruise and I wish I still had the bruise to show you on my arm from where they were trying to feed in the IV um in the pre-op but anyone who's overweight knows when you go to a doctor to have blood drawn or if you have to have an IV if you're having some type of surgical procedure that it's harder on people that are overweight to put in an IV. Well, this nurse just thought she was, you know, the, the crumble on the cake because she was like, oh, I haven't missed a thing today and everything will be okay, you know, and, and one lady had already tried and she was really nice, tried and she's like, I didn't get it, honey, I'm so sorry, I'll try again, you, or, you know, I'll let somebody else try because I don't want to post you twice. They called the other nurse, and she was just real cocky, and was like, oh, I haven't missed a day today, and I was telling her, you know, well, pretty much good luck, you know, but I wasn't being rude to her. <clears throat> I was just joking with her. Well, then she put it in, and was like, oh, I got it, and she was, you know, being real cocky about, because she thought she had it. She So she puts it in, and they start the, they turn on the solution, and all of a sudden, my arm is like the size of a baseball, and it starts hurting. And I'm, I start crying because they wouldn't take it out at first. The lady's like, oh, let me look at it. And I'm like, just take it out. And I'm crying, crying. Take it out, take it out. So finally she, um, they tell the nurse, they tell the one that did it. And I'm glad they did because I wanted her to know, ah, oh, you missed one today. So um, they went ahead and let her know that um, she missed it. So I was laughing about that, actually. And um, then the other really really nice nurse came and, and she was real you know tender with me and, and and very nice and she actually got it in so um everything went smoothly with that um before they put me off with anesthesia um there was an anesthesia nursing student and then i think there were two nursing students um and the anesthesiologist was 